There it is. Shalom, shalom, everybody. Shalom. To the east. Right. Call the Lord Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shai. By Hashem, the Prophet God. Double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone for pushing 100% truth to rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom. This is Bakhiyar Amana. I'm with you. I got me as brother you call. Uh, down here in uh, uh, doing it again for another week down here in Wichita, Kansas. I I, I, I didn't realize that the brother was with uh, uh, with the same uh, uh, the same teachings that I teach with a great millstone. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I went to Kansas City. I know y'all seen my videos. Well, I went to Kansas City looking for the, uh, the Kansas City brothers down there, GMS Kansas City, and I found them. Okay, and uh, they told me about brother your call. I didn't know where he was at. So uh, then I went to his channel and found out that he preaches downtown up under the Indian down there. You know, it's a, a giant statue of uh, uh, the Indian of the plains or whatever down there uh, over the Arkansas River. And so, you know, I didn't I didn't know that. I, I've, you know, I've been out here for three or four years. I, I didn't even know the brother was around, you know what I mean? I just thought I was the only one in Wichita doing this thing, but you know, it's all good. Uh, let's see. I got to... Uh, yeah, I've been busy writing down notes. Elder Foster Tahar, man, hey man. Uh, Elder Foster Kabar, Ariyam Love, hey. I've been taking my notes like y'all said, man. I'm trying to uh, get it right. Uh, let's see. Trying to go off into, more off into that uh, department DOD. Taking notes for what I tell you. Okay, let's see. Uh, yep. Global free speech right now. Like it. I'm just trying to figure out which one I want to use today. Uh, the latest one's at. Go back, eh? Hold on. <laughs> wow. Uh, let's see. There it is. Okay, this one and uh, the one right before it. Okay. Let's go into. Right, the anticipation of nuclear war and the great wrath to come. Right, that's what I'm. Uh, that's what I'm talking about today. Yep. Yep. I, I, yeah, I wrote that down too. You know, concerning the the founder of the state of Israel, David Ben Gurion. Right, because the state of Israel, uh, political Zionism, was created by this bastard in 1948. Right. Uh, at the United Nations. It was called the League of Nations back then. Okay, he was an atheist. So an atheist, David Ben-Gurion, uh, the founder of the uh, those the, uh, the state of Israel, that uh, that Bolshevik uh, Amalekite Khazar, <clears throat> Benjamin Nathan, not a Jew, right, is running the entire world into the ground and forcing America as the least of the flock gonna force and draw America, Babylon the Great, into the fight in the Middle East. Once they come against the Iran, uh, Gog and Magog, which is Russia, and the leader of Russia, okay, which is, you know, uh, what's his name, uh, 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 Vladimir Putin, okay, he's gonna protect Iran, right? Because he has uh, interests uh, concerning natural resources in Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, right? And plus, they all have a mutual agreement where they want to come against 
Babylon the Great, EU, European Union, European Economic Community, NATO, the North Atlantic Trade Organization, okay, World Economic Forum, World Health Organization, supposedly, but they're all coming again to make sure that they push the MOTB, which is the mark of the beast, radio frequency identification microprocessor, subcutaneously implanted and under the skin of each man, woman, and child, either on your left shoulder, your right shoulder, your right hand, or your left hand. Or you can opt for the Neuralink brain chip. Okay? That's right after Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a M-A-R-K, a mark, underneath their skin. Right? Roughly paraphrased. And that's what it is. It's all about chipping the people. They want to chip you and your kids and your grandkids like a fucking dog. Okay? That way they can keep track of you with the uh, visa entry exit visa tracking system that Donald Trump wants to set up. But they're going to put that bitch in there. I was talking to myself uh, uh, with, with my thoughts in my head. They're going to put that woman in there who's not even black. So-called black. She's not even a so-called black woman. The bitch is from India. The people with the little red dot, they don't even claim the chick, right? So it's all over, man. You know, you got Egyptian versus Egyptian. You got the Democrats versus the Republicans, just like it was in Rome before. You got the plebeians versus the patricians. Same goddamn thing. Rome had a Senate and executive branch. The executive branch was Caesar. The judicial branch uh, was Caesar, uh, you know, ruling over you. Okay, and the Senate, the House of Representatives, they had all of that shit back then in Rome 2,000 years ago, and they and the image of the beast, which is America, is set up the same goddamn way. The executive, uh, executive branch of the government, which is the president, a.k.a. Caesar, right? You got the legislative branch of the government that governs the people as far as from state to state and all the vassal states. They got the United States Senate, the House of Representatives, which are all the same thing. Okay, and then you have the uh, the, ju the uh, judicial branches of government, right? Where they had the judges, the, ju the uh, judicial branches of government was the Pope, right? Or uh, what they call uh, the scribes and the Pharisees. You see what I'm saying? Ain't nothing changed about these devils, man. All they did was they just changed the title and, and did it and came at it a different way. That's all they've done. Anyway, when asked about the peace in the Middle East, so-called Middle East, which is Western Asia, okay, another new speak uh, terminology that was created by these Edomite devils in order to continue to push, uh, you know, the fact that there are God's people when they're actually not, like the biblical scriptures tell you in Revelation 2 and 9. You know, Revelation chapter 3 verse 9 tells you the exact same thing. It tells you that these people are not God's chosen people. God's chosen people are scattered throughout all the world as in captivity as slaves the reason why you know that is because we have papers of ownership called a social security card and a birth certificate these are paperwork and on, uh, paperwork of ownership under maritime law here in america as far as negroes latinos and native americans are concerned okay so you see we're still in the land of our captivity whether we this is the largest open air prison on the earth for the children of Israel. You have uh, those so-called legal migrants that are on their way over here right now. Okay, and still coming in more and more every every day. On the plane, bus, ship, okay, in order to receive their either salvation or judgment. Because Babylon the Great is here, right here, America is gonna be left here and burned up, melted down to the mantle. Like it tells you in uh, uh, in Isaiah, uh, chapter 34, okay, verse 8. Uh, pull it up for me, little uh, brother. When asked about peace in the Middle East, the late president of Egypt, Gamal Abdel Nasser, stated, the JEWs will never be able to live here in peace. Why? Because they left here black and came back white. Okay? Remember, the social constructs of black and white were created in 1681. 
by the very self-same Edomites that claim to be Jews, that claim to be Caucasians. The definition of Caucasian means cave dweller. I mean, what the fuck, man? The Caucasus Mountains is in the middle of Ukraine. These people are fighting over their own homeland. Just get your goddamn ass out of here and go back and take over the fucking Ukrainian mountains then. That's where you're from, the Caucasus Mountains. That's where the fuck you're at. Go and take that shit. Get the fuck out of here and leave these people alone. But no, Esau Edom is greedy. And he's a bloodthirsty animal, like it says in Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. Right? Yeah, Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah 34, verse 8. It says, For well, it is the day of the Lord's vengeance in the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. Right. See? So it's all about the controversy of us being the Israelites who we claim and know to be. As opposed to you got those uh, those Amalekite Khazars over there claiming to be us and are not. That's the controversy. And then trying to do everything they can to destroy us mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, right, financially. Okay, and they pretty much succeeded. Our people are completely destroyed. They don't even know who the fuck they are. And our job, okay, since we've decided to accept it, like Mission Impossible, is to try to do what we can to try to wake up as many of our people as we can and re and, 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 and try, to, try to do the best we can to persuade them to rehearse the righteous acts, which is to fear God and keep His commandments. Now, we know you can't keep the commandments perfectly. We knew that. Okay, but my point being is that what we're trying to do is trying to get as many as our people that are willing in the heart to keep the commandments to the best of their ability and to try. The Most High will see the sincerity of your heart and will save you based on the fact that you must know his name. That's another thing that reason why we're out here is to try to get and persuade people that the true name of the Most High and his son is Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai. They are, these are the true biblical Hebrew names of the Son of God and his father. Okay, real talk. The letter J was created in 1524 by John Trusino, an Amalekite biblical scholar. Okay? So it's impossible for Jesus to be the name above all names. It's bullshit. I got a sign. I got a sign up there. Where is it at? Right there. That proves that the Son of God is not a so-called white man, okay? You got another sign over here that tells you about the false image of Cicero Borgia that they set up, okay, during the Renaissance period, the rebirth of the Roman Empire, the Empire of the Edomites, right? So you see, the Most High Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has not had enough of these bastards and they bullshit. So the Most High is gonna come back and destroy these devils from out the face of the earth. Ain't really ain't nothing they can do about it, okay? Because the Most High is doing this for his namesake. It's to save his people, the whole house of Israel. That's the reason why he sent his son, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, as a propitiation or an atonement where his blood might be shed as a sacrifice for the sins of the whole nation. See? The Most High only loves one people, one peculiar people. He does not love everybody. That's a goddamn lie they teach every Sunday at church in a building the size of a fucking matchbox in a state the size of a postage stamp. Okay? If the Most High God, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, if the heavens are his throne and the earth is his footstool, how the fuck can you minimize such a, a, an omnipotent power and put it in a fucking matchbox and go to church and worship a fucking statue of a dead white man? Okay? Are you kidding me? Right? So like you. Okay, go to Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 20. We're going to uh, read uh, Jeremiah 49, thir uh, verses 20 through 22. Uh, uh, this is Jeremiah. You said 49? Jeremiah 49, verse 20. Right. Jeremiah 49, verse 20. It says, Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord. 
the Halabashimiao Shah that he has taken against Edom and his purposes that he has purposed against the inhabitants of Teman, surely the beast of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their inhabitants inhabitations desolate with, with them. That's right. Okay, and Benjamin Nathanadaju is forcing America in order to come over here, over there to their country, forcing them against their will, you know, in order to go to war with Iran, Lebanon, Syria, Libya, which are pretty much African nations, Hamite nations from the land of the Canaanites. See, nothing's changed. Malachi chapter three, verse six says, I am the Lord thy God, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. If the Most High God doesn't change, then who changed his, his true, uh, his true uh, perpetual uh, nature towards Esau, Edom, and the nations of perpetual hatred? Who changed it then? Those individuals that are over there drawing Babylon the Great into that third world's war. We're already at war. All they're trying to do right now is they're trying to use gradualism and gradually push a soft medical martial law here in the United States. Okay, so the people don't lose their fucking mind and come against the government and destroy them. They have to come up with a continuance of government ideology. Okay, and the only way that they could do that is they built these deep underground military bases and underground bunkers, underground cities. They did that bullshit. They've been building on that shit since the 60s. Okay, under the United States under different parts of Europe, okay? They've been doing it for years. Right, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse one. The word of the Lord spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard, publish and conceal not and that's what we're out here doing you know like it tells you in isaiah 58 and 1 cry aloud spare not lift up thy voice like a trumpet right get that isaiah 58 and 1. sorry about being all over the place y'all but you know that's how that's the way the spirit come out man can't help it it's isaiah 58 verse 1 cry aloud spare not Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and shew my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. Exactly. So and that's what we try to do out here, man. Every week, by any means necessary, man. Try to get our hard-headed ass stiff neck people to turn around, man. Turn around before the most high get here. Because Yahweh and Mashiach and the angels, when they get here, how will you hide your sins before his face? How will you hide your sins before the most high and his angels? How are you gonna do it? Where the fuck are you gonna hide from the Most High God? If you're stuck with a fucking blunt in your mouth, getting a blowjob from your brother's wife, or uh, uh, or some other stupid shit like that, you know, or or, or, or you got a, a piece of shrimp in your mouth at the goddamn fast food restaurant, seafood store, you know, eating frog legs, you know, alligator tails, stupid shit like that, we ain't supposed to eat, you know. That stuff is made up and, and cooked by these heathen nations. They're heathen. The only people that are, the Most High God loves and cherishes are Israelites. That's never going to change, man. Right? Say Babylon is, is taken, Baal is confounded, Merodach is broken in pieces. So the Most High is going to come here and destroy all of the idols, all of bullshit Hollywood, Okay, because you got people that idolize those superstars out there in Hollywood. So since they're idols, they gotta be destroyed, right? Okay. Babylon is going to be taken. How? Intercontinental ballistic thermonuclear missiles. ICBM missiles. Okay, let's go over here to, uh, where is it? Second Ezra. Chapter 13. No. Yep, yep, 2nd Ezra chapter 13. No, Zalakia, 16. 
verse 13. I was going to say 13, verse 16. But in 2 Ezra chapter 16, right, verse 13. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bolt. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot to, into the ends of the world. Now, you can't take a fucking bow and arrow and shoot it to the other end of the world. That's some bullshit you see off of the Wonder Woman uh, movie with the, with, with the one bitch trying to play Wonder Woman, okay? Which is a fictitious uh, character based on uh, Greek mythology, okay? See, so it's a lie. That's what, the, uh, that's what uh, Howard Wood is all about. It's telling you a goddamn lie to your face and make you believe it, okay? With, uh, with CG and... Uh, uh, a computer generated technology right second Ezra chapter 16 verse 11 the Lord shall threaten and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence right the most high Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah is coming to destroy a lot of people man okay when he gets here and his spirit goes throughout all the earth because he's gonna have his, his death angels like it tells you in Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4, he's going to send his death angels throughout all the earth, destroying every goddamn thing and everybody that does not know his name and does not keep the law, statutes, or commandments of the Most High. I'm telling you right now to your face, you're a fucking dead man if you don't turn back and repent. Because the Most High don't give a shit, man. The Most High don't care. He has no respect for persons. He don't respect you just because you got a suit and tie on. Fuck you. You do what you told, or the most high is gonna kill you. It's that simple. Okay. Second yeah, no, no, no. Uh let's go to second second Ezra chapter 16. Verse 35. Uh, right, you got it? This is second Ezra 16, verse 35. It says hear now these things and understand them ye servants of the Lord verse right. 36 go ahead verse 36 behold the word of the Lord Jehovah Shemiah Shai receiveth believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake right see so they got all these false gods out here Cicero Borgia aka Jeepers Cross you know this long haired homosexual white man that they put the image of saying that he's the son of God and loves everybody. That's what's wrong with the fucking church now. You got all of them people that's going out uh, every Sunday, they go to church, you got a bunch of gays in there, you got a bunch of fucking uh, nasty, wicked ass women dressed like whores and sluts, wearing all tight fitting clothing, showing their fucking cleavage, got all kinds of uh, 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 broidered hair, got uh, uh, wigs on, got uh, with purple and brown and red, pink, all kinds of motherfucking makeup on, got the nose pierced, got the tongue pierced. These people ain't doing nothing to change. They ain't doing nothing to change. And then you got all these goddamn lesbians up in there who like to lick up at the Y, do it at the muffin munch patch. You know what I'm saying? Bumping and grinding at the Y, if you know what I mean. You know, leaving the natural use of the woman for that which is against nature. It's against nature for two women to be together. That shit don't even make sense. You can't make no life out of that, right? The Most High God, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai's uh, righteous judgment against the woman for being the first in the transgression of sin, uh, of violating the laws of the Most High God that he told them as a commandment that thou shalt not eat of the tree in the midst of the garden of good, uh, uh, of, of, of the garden and of, of the knowledge of good and evil for uh, in the day that they did that you do it you shall surely die right who is the first in the transgression the woman like it says in uh uh ecclesiasticus the book of sirach chapter uh 25 verse 20 uh 20 26 i think it is i i can't remember let me go in here and see right quick go to 25 Yep, it's 25. Is it 25? Yeah. Ecclesiasticus, the book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 24. Of the woman became uh, came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. So it's pretty much the woman's fault, the reason why we're at the fucking bottom. 
okay, that man fell from grace, right? That's the reason, because she was the first one in the transgression. But she'll go to goddamn church dressed like a hoe, with a goddamn dress all the way up to her pussy, you know, wearing high heels, six inch stilettos and a fucking wig and everything else that she ain't supposed to be wearing. It tells you that in, uh, uh, what is it, uh, First Corinthians? And then it tells you again in uh, uh, Ephesians about how a woman is supposed to be. You know, but they, they ain't listening. They don't give a shit. You know, they ain't gonna go to church to, and worship Jesus Christ because he lets them do whatever the fuck they wanna do. You know, you got your man kicked out of your house, you know, ain't nobody taking care of the fucking kids. You at the club trying to find some dick, you know, and you got all, and you turn around all of a sudden, time like that, you know, how can you be saved? How can we bring salvation to an individual like you? And so that's all you're trying to do is trying to get money, trying to give away your box. It's all completely destroyed and stretched out. Okay, don't nobody want that nasty shit. Now, if you respect yourself with some integrity and dignity and stand up like a real woman and cover up your body with self-respect, maybe a real man will come and approach you. But now you want to tell the entire goddamn world with your titties out. Don't nobody want to see that shit. You see enough of that shit on the news. You see it on, on the movies all the time. Women giving up their own body for nothing behind some fucking money. You know, it don't make sense. The Son of God is going to destroy a lot of women. A whole lot of women. Yeah, a whole lot of women, boy. Y'all been uh, Yeah, go to, uh, I think it's in the book of Micah. Right. Right. Micah chapter 7. Right. Verse 10. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? So, us like men, uh, us uh, righteous men, because, you know, he sought out as, as such as be like thee. Right, like it's like uh, the angel told the angel Uriel told uh, Ezra in the book of Second Ezra, chapter eight. So he sought me out, and we all preach on the same on the same doctrine. You see what I'm saying? Through uh, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and they push 100 percent true. You know, our women gonna betray us in that day. You know, where is the Lord thy God when they shut out the power? Where is the Lord thy God? when you can't go to the goddamn store and buy food to feed the kids. Babies hollering and crying. Where is the Lord thy God when there ain't no fucking food or gas to put in your car? Where is the Lord thy God when, uh, when uh, you know, we get laid off, furloughed, or uh, or get fired from our jobs because there ain't no way we can feed our families no more, right? That's what the woman gonna say to us in that day, man. Because the only a woman is hypergamous. You know, they going with the guy with the most money. If you ain't got no money to help them out on their endeavor to do whatever the fuck they want to do, they don't need you. They'll kick your ass straight up to the curb and, and go get somebody else at the club. That's how, that's the, that's the true biblical Hebrew nature of the nigga woman here in America. And all the other women following suit behind her doing the same shit. That's the reason why the abortion rate is the highest among the Israelite women. Negroes and Latino women. Abortion weight is highest amongst us. Ab amongst our women, anyway. Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. So at that day, when she's talking about the Lord thy God, you move the man out the way, motherfuckers gonna come in and kick the door in, rape you, cut your throat, rape your kids, or sell them off into the, in the sex slaves. You see what I'm saying? because Jacob's trouble is coming for Jacob because Jacob is the one that won't repent. Jacob are of the 12 tribes of Israel. Negroes, the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, the West Indians, Levi, the Haitians, Simeon, the Dominicans, Zebulon, the Guatemalans and Panamanians, Manasseh, the Cubans, Ephraim, the Puerto Ricans, the North American Indians, the tribe of Gad, 
Hell, even the tribe of God is waking up out, out there in New York City. They're sick and tired of you, uh, these Edomites bullshit. Ain't nothing they can do, man. Okay? The Seminole Indian, the tribe of Reuben. White man is still pissed off at the tribe of Reuben down in Florida right to this day for kicking their ass consistently. Okay? The Argentinians and Chileans, Naphtali, Asher, the Colombians, the Uruguayans, the Brazilians, the Venezuelans, and Issachar are the Mexicans. We are all the, uh, the children of the Most High God that he chose above all nations upon the face of the earth to receive salvation through the atonement blood of Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, his only begotten son. Only people getting out of here is us. And only one third of us, because one third of us actually want to repent and go back and keep the commandments to the best of it until he get here. What we try to do is endeavor to learn his name so we can learn the true biblical Hebrew name of the Most High because the Most High does not change, remember? Esau Edom changed his name. The goddamn white man changed his name. That's who changed it. And he gonna pay for it too. Changing names and shit. How are you gonna change the people's, uh, the, the people's name from who they are as the Most High God had already directed from the foundations of the earth? He's always gonna love his people. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6 and Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 2. No problem. Yeah, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. This will prove to you that the Most High God chose the Israelites of the Holy Bible that are Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. He didn't choose these goddamn white folks. Fucking Caucasians, cave dwellers, fucking cavemen. They got the Geico caveman on TV commercials again. Okay, these people are still making fun of their own people. Throwing in our face, man. Now, and they and they making fun of themselves, throwing it up in our face that they're the caveman and they and we and they rule over us. Uh, what is it, the dialectic? Right. They telling themselves. Right. The Hegelian dialectic: pressure from above and pressure from above, or uh, below. Okay, where. They take all of your different alternatives and all of your natural resources and funnel you off into a chute, right? Where it causes you to be forcibly uh, dependent, codependent on the United States government for food, for shelter, for water, for medicine, okay, and for monetary compensation so you can buy and sell in their cashless society. That's the Hegelian dialectic. If they take all of your different alternatives away from you, Bitcoin, uh, cash, money, gold, silver, you don't have a choice but to take uh, the uh, radio frequency identification microprocessor. You ain't got a choice, you stuck. You see what I mean? We have Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse six. Deuteronomy <coughs> seven and six, for thou art the holy people unto the Lord, thy power, Yahweh Shemiah the Lord Yahweh thy God, hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, all right? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Right, see? So the Most High God, that, that, is, a, that is an axiom that will never change. You understand me? It ain't never gonna change. The Most High Yahweh does not change. He would keep the oath that he had sworn unto our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that there would always be a man of Israel on the throne of King David. That was a promise he made to King David. Okay, that was a promise he made to Abraham. That was a promise he made to Isaac. That was a promise that he made to Jacob. Let me go get it. Ecclesiastes, you go to uh, 2nd Ezra chapter 3, verse 13 through 16. I'm going to go to uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 44, verse 19. Uh, yep, chapter, uh, second Ezra chapter 3, verse 13. Start reading. Uh, it says, now when, they, now when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them whose name was Abraham. Verse 14, him thou lovest, and unto him only thou showest thy will. Right? Verse 15. And maddest an everlasting covenant with him, promising.
promise to him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed. Verse 16, it says, And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gave, gavest Jacob and Esau. Here come. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee, and put by Esau, and so Jacob became a great multitude. And Jacob became a great multitude. Esau was put off to the side. Why? Because he despised his birthright. Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. Uh, Genesis 25 and 32. Right? Esau despised his birthright. He didn't give two shits or two fucks about it. Right? Okay. No, it was uh, verse 34. Genesis chapter 25, verse 34. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. That's the reason why the Most High God hates Esau as it is written. In Romans chapter 9, verse 13, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. That's the reason why the Most High God hates Esau, because he despised his birthright. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16, lest any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For as ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, Although he sought it out carefully with tears. And right to this goddamn day, these Edomite pickle woods are still trying to find a way out of their coming destruction. Ain't gonna happen. Okay? The Most High God looked at Esau as he despised his birthright that he gave to his friend Abraham. And he despised it and rejected it. And sold it to his younger brother Jacob. He didn't give a shit about it. All he cared about was... A, a, a motherfucking a Big Mac Happy Meal at McDonald's. That was the same equivalent. Okay, and the idea of it. Okay, he wanted something fast food. Where do you think the ideology of fast food restaurants came from? Esau Edom came up with that bullshit. Okay, Esau Edom came up with fast food restaurants, man. Right? Because that motherfucker's always in a hurry to do wickedness, but he needs to stop by and refuel. That's all it's about. Thus Esau got up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. You do that, you see that shit at every fast food restaurant in town. Right behind me at Popeye's Chicken, we got a whole goddamn line around the building. Every, before they go and uh, uh, go back into the world and do their wickedness, they want to stop and get something to eat. That's just like you taking a pit stop at the fucking gas station. That's what Esau did. And he saw his birthright, man. That's why, like I said before, that's why God hates the motherfucker, man. And he ain't gonna never change his mind about it. Okay? He ain't never gonna change his mind. Right? Go to, uh... Zephaniah. Verse 7, start there. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 7. Yeah. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 7 says, Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord, Yahweh Shemiah Shah, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. Okay, now. His guests are the elect of the house of Israel, the remnant. Isaiah, go to Isaiah chapter 10, verse 20. Okay. The remnant, the elect of the house of Israel that were predestinated for salvation at the beginning of time, before the foundations of the world were laid. Okay. Our names were already written in the book. All we're doing now is we're trying to activate those individuals that are written in the book so this way their names will be checked off okay for sac uh, for salvation when you have gets here i didn't say if i said when these edomite devils are scared to fucking death 
they make it illegal for you to get in, uh, get online and, and look at the, uh, the Hubble telescope, right? They make it illegal for you to do that. It's against the law now. If you go and get on the James Webb telescope, they're seeing uh, uh, chariots of the Most High God all throughout the sectors and different sectors of outer space right motherfucking now. The Son of God is on his way to save his people. Right. I got the video on my channel of uh, one of the uh, the Mexican, uh, uh, the little, uh, uh, from the tribe of Issachar, the little uh, essay. You know, he was watching it on, uh, on his TV, right? And uh, it was spaceships the size of New York City or bigger, you know, the size of the entire motherfucking continent of the United States going across his TV screen, man. Okay, what is that? What the fuck is that? Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 2 tells us uh, that be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them. Those are the signs of heaven of salvation, the chariots of the Most High God, as it is written in Psalms uh, uh, six, what is it, 68 and 17? The chariots of the Most High God, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, are 20,000, even thousands of angels, and the Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place, which are in the heavens and the stars and the skies above us. See? And they're not telling you that. Yeah, uh, uh, did, you, did you finish reading? Yeah, read uh, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 20. Right. Isaiah 10 and 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the, the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. Right. See, and the only people that are staying on the Holy One of Israel in truth are those that can call upon his true biblical Hebrew name. You can't call upon no fucking Yeshua and yeah, uh, what you call this, uh, uh, Yahushua. Those are mistransliterations of the name based on vowel points that had been uh, uh, put into the Assyrian script Hebrew. And vowel points were never supposed to be there. The Hebrew language is based on consonants, man. It is a direct language, right? It's no uh, these and, and ands, buts. Those are contractive words based on the vowel points, right? They're not supposed to be there, man. Okay, now my point being is that the uh, uh, Joseph Ben Yehudi put those in there in the Assyrian script Hebrew back in, uh, in the 1500s, the 14 to 1500s, okay? Okay, and, and, made a, and made all of the Catholic priests study this. So when King James got a hold to it, he spread it out throughout the entire world, unbeknownst to him that that's what they had done. Right? So, I mean, the man did what he was supposed to do. He ended up spreading the biblical scriptures of the Most High God throughout the four corners of the earth. Right? Okay. Did you finish reading it? You on, uh, which, which verse are you on? Uh, it's called 20. I mean, I finished it. You need to go to verse 21. Yeah, go to the next verse. All right, Isaiah 10 and 21, it says, The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God, Yahweh. That's right. The only people that are going to do that, okay, are the most eyes chosen, the elect. Like it tells you in Malachi, let's get it, Malachi. Chapter, chapter three, verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Now the only people that fear the Lord and think upon his name every day are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. All the rest of these people, they believe in Jesus Christ, punk bitch, homosexual superstar. Some goddamn dead white man. Don't nobody give a shit about this punk. He's the individual that allows the woman to talk and be disrespectful against her man.
right? That's what happened. Our women are completely out of control. They do whatever they want to do, however they want to do it, wherever they want to do it. And there's nothing that we can do about it. If we say something against them, they just call the police and have us put in jail. What kind of shit is that? But they respect their man? You looking for a good man? You put them out in prison. You sent them down the goddamn street and made them pay child support. Fuck you. That's the reason why the most high God is gonna destroy these women down here. Ungrateful Hessians. Ain't worth the damn blood nickel. Malachi, chapter three, verse 17. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. So you see the Israelites that are written in the book of remembrance, that think upon the name of the Lord, that call upon his name in the day of trouble, as it tells you in Joel chapter two, verse 32, only those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Okay, those are the only people that are gonna get out of here. Okay, all of, these, all of these other people out here, they go to church every Sunday. Is that Sunday worship, the vulnerable day of the sun? That's sun worship. They had that shit back in the, in, uh, during the kingdom of Babylon and Daniel, Daniel the prophet. That's what they were worshiping back then. In Egypt, when we were slaves and captives in Egypt, under Moses, right? When Moses was, an, uh, was mistaken for an Egyptian, right? Hell, Egypt is in the center of Africa, <clears throat> the land of Canaan or the land of Ham. That's, what that's another thing that they're not teaching you. <clears throat> you see, they don't want you to know the truth, the 100% truth of what's going on, man. They want you to be in derision. They want you to be proverbs of reproach so they have something to talk about. <clears throat> right? Uh, let me go, I'll finish up Malachi, okay. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. And ye shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth the most high God and him that serveth him not. Right? So you got people out there that don't actually serve the most high God. You got these goddamn uh, wicked pastors and preachers at church. They don't serve the most high, they serve their own belly. They try to get as much money in their belly as possible. So they can buy them a deep underground bunker. They know what the fuck is coming. In order to continue to keep that money coming in, uh, in order they gotta stay 501c3 tax exempt, which is a muzzle on the truth. They muzzle it, they, they uh, muffle it up, the truth. They do that deliberately and on purpose. They have to answer to the archdiocese of the Roman Catholic Church in order to continue to stay 501c3 tax exemption so they'd be exempt from taxes on their job, exempt from taxes at church. They don't have to pay no fucking bills, right? They get 50% off of whatever. See, that's the reason why they do it. You know, the, the pastors at church, they don't give a shit about you. All they care about or your salvation. All they care about is how much money you're putting in that proper plate. That's it. Other than that, fuck you. Next. Real talk, man. Will a man rob God? Yep. And tithes and offerings. True tithes and offerings are what you have as a farmer or in the lands of your captivity. If you don't have any uh, farm animals in order to sacrifice, okay, for your sins every year, a high priest, an ephod, we don't have any of those things in order for us to prove who we are as the Israelites of the Holy Bible. All we got now and all we have left today is uh, me and the brother and other uh, righteous men that be like us. Right? Let's get uh, second Ezra. Right? Verse uh, uh, second Ezra chapter eight. Verse 50. Let's start there. Okay, for many great miseries shall be done to them in the latter time that shall dwell in the world. Okay, and these great miseries are jumping off right now for everybody in Babylon the Great and the world in general. Okay, they've already pushed the, uh, the radio frequency identification microprocessor 
the size of a grain of rice in Canada and the European nations in Australia. They're trying to push it through the BRICS nations uh, uh, in China and Africa. Okay, they're trying to get rid of all of the uh, cash money, right? They're trying to get rid of all the paper money because they want America and do business with America with gold and silver. America ain't got none. So what America's trying to do is come up with central bank digital currency, Biden bucks, right? Okay, that's gonna force people to make a decision. If you wanna be a part and participate in a cashless society and continue on in your wickedness, you're gonna have to uh, pledge allegiance to Satan. And the only way you can pledge allegiance to Satan is to accept the microchip underneath your skin to be subcutaneously implanted underneath it. That's the only way. That way you can continue with universal basic income. The universal 